Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. So, today we're actually going to flip something we've done before. Uh, actually, have we done- No, actually- Well... No. No, we have not. I've been thinking about videos I've made in the past. This is pretty original, which is rare for this channel. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the plan is we turn the moon into a star and we're gonna see if we can do it um i do not think this is going to be very possible but i think there's a few ways we can cheat and make it kind of work obviously if we put the mass too high the moon will just kind of eat the earth but ignoring that we can basically turn the moon into a star and have the Earth or orbit the moon, which would be pretty similar to the moon orbiting to, uh, the Earth. Because if we look from Earth's perspective, the moon's going around the uh, moon is going around the Earth. But if we look from the moon's perspective, it looks like the Earth is going around the moon. So as long as the distance is the same, it's it's similar. I mean. It's not the same, but it's the closest we're going to get within the laws of physics. So let's begin. Let's see how far we can uh, raise the moon's mass before we start hitting serious problems. And here we go. Now, as the mass of the moon increases, it's going to pull the earth more strongly, messing with tides. Uh... Uh, much more than that though, it's actually modifying the orbit of the Earth. As you can see, it's pulling the Earth around in circles. The Earth is actually going a little bit more in one direction than the rest, which makes it slightly dangerous. But the Moon is now expanding to... Eh, it's at one-tenth of the mass of Earth. So let's zoom it up and make it the mass of the Earth. Now it's going to start having a little bit of a uh, dance routine with Earth. And if we raise the mass a little bit more, the Earth is going to have a hard time staying away from the moon. So at this point you can see the exact problem with making the moon into a star. And it's that... <laughs> The Earth and Moon would just keep getting closer and closer together until the Moon eventually ate Earth. And this is going to happen in a second, but I have to just... I have to do this to prove that it would actually... Oh, here's the Roche limit kicking in. The amount of gravitational force between them is actually melting them. And it's causing Earth to be ripped apart now. Um, so... There is the issue. I think it's pretty clear why this is a problem. And now let's get to fixing it. So, we are going to have the Earth orbit the Moon to make this work. Which, like I said, from the perspective of Earth, won't be very different. If you look at the entire solar system, of course, yes, it's completely different. But we are only looking in a small scope to see the differences. So, what's very important is the distance from the Moon to the Earth. Which we're just gonna copy. Actually, it's right here. We're at about 400,000 kilometers. I'm going to round. So now we are going to do this. We're going to get the moon and we're going to give it the very minimum required to turn it into a star. We're doing the bare minimum. It's like school all over again. So we're gonna go. Jupiter and I think we're going to have to go more than one Jupiter definitely 10 Jupiter is so we're gonna be getting a little bit close to stardom but there's a bit more work to be done now we are just a gas giant because the amount of mass in the center is heating it up you can see surface temperature is raising and the moon is starting to compress itself this means we're getting very close to a star 
We are actually emitting a very high amount of heat now. 300 degrees Celsius, triple what you need to boil water. And that's the average temperature, so that's pretty much throughout the entire planet. And now it's going up, 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 speeding up, and nuclear fusion is going to uh, occur now. There we are. So the moon is now a very, very, very small star. But that's fine. It's also very active because it's made of very heavy elements and it's extremely unstable. Uh, but we're going to do the best we can. So we're going to go 400,000 like before. So this is about the distance the Earth and Moon were before. And as you can see, uh, the Moon is so large that it gets rid of a bit of the distance between the surface. But when it comes to center of mass, it's still the same. And now the tables have turned. Earth is orbiting the Moon. Everything is confusing. So let's let this go. Let's see what happens. So Earth is, uh, I don't know why Earth is so dark, that's, oh, so it's too close. Earth is being torn apart, this is a problem, for obvious reasons. Um, the Earth being, <laughs> how quickly is it being ripped apart? Uh, it's not that fast, but it's definitely doing some damage to the Earth, so we're going to have to uh, rethink how we're doing this. Look at that. Look at the little trail Earth is leaving behind. That's wonderful. Just getting completely ripped apart. Ooh, a bit of flame coming out there. Hot gas is being ripped off. That must have. That right there is the atmosphere. <laughs> it's gone now. And uh, the rest of Earth is soon to follow. So, let's jump over to... I don't even know which one's Earth anymore. <laughs> it's got to be close to here. That looks like the freshest. Uh, this Is this Earth? It's being ripped apart. I think this is what's left of Earth. I can't tell. The point is, this isn't going to work. We have to try uh, something else. So, we're going to save this. Moon. Moon star. So that we can reuse it gonna make a new simulation and we're going to grab the moon star which is going to be under my objects and M there's a moon star and all we have to do now is I'm going to so that we're technically still the same distance we're gonna go the distance away from the surface so that's going to be here so 70 70,000 ish, yeah, 70,000 plus 400,000, so that's going to be 470. and seventy thousand kilometers. So that's about the same distance between the surface of the moon and the surface of Earth. However, I do not think it's going to make much of a difference for Earth. And why is Earth still so dark? Jeez, is this just letting out no light according to the game? Yeah, it is. We're just going to change this to let it let out light because that's weird. It should be. Um, so now we can see its effect on the surface of Earth, of course. You can see it's... Oh, well, it did light up Earth and now it's really lighting up Earth. Um... Earth is being melted by the Rosh Lamb, but is it going to be ripped apart? Is it at least slightly more plausible than where it was before? It looks like it. It looks like Earth is not going to be ripped apart at this uh, position. Which, progress. That just means we can do one of two things. We can see how small we can get the moon. No, that's... That's, that's the closest... That's pretty much the closest we can get. Or we can move the Earth further out, which is also an option. Slightly more complicated, though. Look at that. Poor Earth. 
being vaporized by its own moon. Top 10 anime betrayals. <laughs> okay, so we are going to go ahead and we are going to do this one other way, which is once again a way we could do it where we'd technically be doing it correctly, but it's just measured in a different way. So the radius of the moon is 2,000 kilometers. And we're going to make a ratio. Actually, let's go by. Let's make a ratio by the mass. Um, so the mass of the moon is going to be one moon. Wow. Yes, that's great math. Yes, the mass of the moon is equal to one moon. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm grabbing a calculator because this is actually going to get slightly. Oh, I guess it's not that bad. I probably didn't need to grab a calculator for this. It's just 400,000, and then we gotta get how many moons the other, uh, the star is. Where is the star? Our moon star. And then we put moon star down, and we figure out how much mass this has in moons. And this has the mass of... Oh boy. Yeah, uh... 2 million moons, so this is going to be really far away. <laughs> and that's going to be... Oh boy. That's a big number. So that's going to be... Thousand... Million... Billion. 800 billion kilometers away. That may be a little bit too far. Um... Realistically, I can't even see the number on that. Oh, there. If we were to do this correctly, that's that right there is one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. So that's one million. So one billion is going to be a bit further out. That's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven zeros. So that's ten million. That's a hundred million. Right? One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so this is gonna be one billion. And it's eight billion. So one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> no, this is ridiculous. This isn't gonna work at all. So doing it proportionally to mass is just absolutely ludicrous. Um, if we gave the moon the luminosity of the sun... How bright would it be on Earth? That is the question. Oh wow, actually a little bit of light is reaching. Huh, so this isn't as horrible. The interesting thing is if we slightly increase the mass of the moon, the light should go up much faster. But, you know, that's not the question. The question is, how is Earth going to do? Um, it's gonna get cold. I can already promise that. But how cold? This moon is a really small star, so I don't think... Yeah, it's... It's gonna get to uh, absolute zero-ish. Not quite. Negative 232. Oh, wait. Yeah, negative... Negative 232. So it's a bit too cold. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna have to uh, go closer. So now let's cheat. We're gonna find somewhere where this would work. Somewhere where this would be feasible, and then all we have to do is habitable, and click on the star. There we are. So, for it to be habitable, uh, Earth would have to be out. Now, not quite a billion, or eight billion. We've got to go out somewhere about 200 million kilometers. So, you know what? When it comes to orders of magnitude, that... Using that wasn't that far off. It was only eight times off. And when it, we're working on scales this large, I'm actually surprised the number was that close. 
I bet now we've got our very orange sky because of the uh, sun not being a white. And Earth's temperature is falling. So that means that we have to move it a little bit further in. Um, I'll move it here and auto orbit it. And what does this do for us? Oh, we've got one degree, two degrees, three, four, five, six, seven. Can we hold around 10 to 15? Oh, it looks like we're going to hold at a livable temperature. It may be a little bit hot. Okay, we're getting a little bit on the warm side. This is fine if you can just stop here. I believe in you, Earth. 20 degrees Celsius. So, at this point, um, 20 C in Fahrenheit. Oh, no, this isn't bad at all. Oh, I was thinking, okay, I was thinking, uh, temperature incorrectly for Celsius. But, you know, we can actually just fix this because we said we're gonna make it work anyways. All we have to do is change the albedo of Earth. Which isn't here. We can just get rid of all the car uh, carbon dioxide in the air. I mean, that's a solution, isn't it? Okay, so that may cause a little bit too much of cooling. So we're just gonna... <clears throat> oh, look at that. We did a thing. It's a little bit cold. Or, you know what, let's see. What does Universe Sandbox 2 have the average temperature of Earth at? That's what I thought. 15 degrees-ish. So I was right in saying that 20-something was way too hot. Okay. So, yeah. That's right. Um. So I was right. Got it. So that means that right here... By decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide on Earth, we can actually have a nice stable relationship with the moon. Even though the moon isn't very unstable, and very likely, this is going to happen. Yep, a supernova. Uh, that's when we're working with heavy uh, materials on a star. It's so once it gets to iron, it starts to make less uh, energy than it is uh, using up. And that's when it gets to the point where it's dying, and the moon is not made out of light elements, so it would not go through nuclear fusion very well. But it looks like it actually survived a supernova, which is weird. There we go, it's gone now. Yep, the moon did not survive the second one. That's it. Pack it up. Thank you all for watching this uh, video. I'll see you all next time. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And don't forget to leave a suggestion for the next Universe Sandbox 2. Bye.